big welcome and uh, thank you so much for coming out. We've got three really short sessions for you. I'm Ernie Fleming, the principal. They're about 12 minutes uh, in length and I'll do the big picture. The learning community leader is Janie Ryan. She'll follow and come in here. And if we time it right, you won't see our commercial a thousand times tonight, which might be good. And then Jenny Brown will come in and talk about the curriculum that we run at the school. Um, first of all, we hope, I mean, the, the objective of tonight is that by the time you walk out of here, you feel that you have all the information to make an informed choice about schooling for next year in year seven. We're a school that doesn't want you to choose us simply because you live across the road. We really do want you to know what we offer and you'll know best whether that actually suits or fits your child. We're very clear about what we're on about. It's in one sentence, which we call our vision statement. Uh, we're committed to every student having the knowledge, skills and attributes and primarily for that moral purpose that as adults they can contribute to their community. And there's three really important aspects of that vision to us and, and the one that I hope shines out tonight is even though we're a large school, is that every student here, we want to be successful. We've built systems and structures, etc., to ensure that in a large school we get the benefit of that by having a really broad curriculum, and our two captains will uh, talk to you about that shortly. But it also means is that we, we, have, we can look after the individual student and with their own special needs. We want them, we know that when they walk out of here, the best thing we can give them is to be highly skilled uh, learners, so that throughout life they can keep being learners in their work and in their uh, community life, and obviously that capacity to make the world a better place because they're here and because they have the capacity to do that. That word success, you know, unless you define it, is really hard to understand, I think, but here we say that there are 10 elements that make up success at a year level. So each year level there are 10 elements and students are expected to work through those. Uh, some of them are obvious, such as your English mark, your maths mark, and others are about being part of our community, about joining in. Also really like that idea is that by the time they finish with us, that we have, they have these qualities, what we call graduate qualities. And, the, uh, and to do that, we know that it only works well if, if we have a partnership. And we call ourselves a community school, and we love that idea, we don't just enrol students, we enrol their families with them. So it might be an old-fashioned idea, but we still call ourselves a community school. We love having volunteers in our canteen. We love having parent involvement in our school. And to do that, uh, we have high expectations. And the only thing we say that if you choose us, you also understand and choose the community uh, rules, if you like. We expect full uniform. We expect students to be here on our community days. We expect you to be actively involved in your school. Uh, every year when we do our graduation, we morph the four pictures of our students as they go onto the stage. And I see some familiar faces and you'll be aware of that. And it just reminds us of how privileged we are in this school to have students take that journey from childhood to young adulthood. And obviously it is a really significant part of life. And it is where students are making a whole lot of decisions about who they are going to be and what they're going to do in their life. So adolescent learning, as we call it, is a specialist area, and you'd expect a school that's year 7 to 10 to be specialist in doing that. Our motto is strive for excellence, and uh, sometimes mottos are just, you know, they're just words. But we try and actually live that. Academically, we track our students through Bendigo Senior, and we, and we know that they do very well, and we keep looking at that as to how we can help, uh, help them do even better. We think it even more importantly that they actually strive for excellence in their work skills. So we have a learning passport system that basically encourages and, and hopefully motivates students to actually get their work done on time, work hard in class, all of those sort of things as well. That's the big picture and I'll be around later for you to catch and talk. Um, I will close as well but it's probably best boys and girls who are here in grade six to hear it from people who have lived it for four years. Uh, our year, our leadership program is something really special in this school for our year 10s and uh, you're privileged and we're privileged to have our two captains this year and they're here to talk to you a bit about their experience at BSE. Please welcome Amy Bilkey and Jack Ryan. Thank you very much Mr Fleming. I also would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone here. 
This evening I will be speaking to you all about some of the amazing co-curricular opportunities there are at BSE. Grade 6 students, no matter what your interests are, there are many great pathways and programs here to help you and support you to become the great possible version of yourself. Each year level is given a theme to accompany it and to ensure all students progress in our schooling with exceptional learning values. The Year 7 theme of teamwork is essential when coming into a new school full of unfamiliar faces. At Year 10, every student gets the opportunity to take on a real leadership role. I love being able to put back into my school through my captaincy this year. There are programs here to cater for all interests. We get the opportunity to run and be a part of all Bendigo events, like earlier this week where we participated in the Science and Engineering Challenge. BSE has represented Victoria in this challenge for the last two years. BSE is one of the most brilliant music programs. It's offered to all students if they are passionate about music. There are also production and Wakakiri classes offered to, those, to cater for those who are passionate about dancing and drama. The Academy of Creative Arts helps to develop students as artists. Now we progress to sporting at BSE. The Athlete Development Program, or ADP for short, is for students who wish to further excel their sporting potential and talents with coaching from talented national and international coaches. There are many sporting teams to represent BSE in inter-school, Loddon Valley region, state competitions, and even national championships. Last week, it was announced that the Latrobe University will be home to a new technology school. This will enable students with an interest in science, technology, engineering and maths subjects to further branch out into our community. This is just one of the examples of the many fabulous pathways that there are here at BSE. There are many different ways for you to personalise your own learning, but one of the most effective and accessible tools is your dashboard. It is one of the tools that I use absolutely every day and honestly have no idea how I would live without it. We also have an extensive range of student exchanges and global tours going to China, Germany, America, Indonesia and World Challenge. I had the privilege to go to Indonesia late last year and it was hands down one of the best experiences that I have ever had. I was able to immerse myself into a whole new culture which was so different and it really helped me to improve my Indonesian language knowledge and skills. Thank you very much for listening to me, and I will now hand you over to Jack, who will be speaking about this. Uh, thank you, Amy. And so I'll be talking about my life as a Year 7, I suppose, to all the new, to all the Grade 6s who are coming here. So basically, I was thinking back, and the start of my school life definitely started at these open days. And I know it sounds cliche, but it does really immerse you in the school and it gets you thinking about what your future options are. And for a lot of the grade sixes here, in six to seven months, some of you will be 13 and you'll be definitely starting high school. The most helpful thing for me was walking around the school, getting to know it, getting to know the region and definitely the community. Coming from Stratford State Primary, it was a huge jump from about 500 students to 1,400, 1,500. And getting to know your school on a night like this is extremely beneficial. And, and there will soon, there'll be soon an orientation day where your teachers and you'll be able to learn about your teachers and your school environment and you'll be able to learn about the difficulties about getting around the school. But it'll all come to you, don't worry. See, and on this orientation day, there'll be no other kids around you, so it'll just be all you year sevens, and you'll be able to really immerse yourself in the school. And the first weeks of, the first weeks of school, uh, the teachers really welcome you, and I know that your year level leader will definitely welcome you too. Because getting used to a new school, we know, is definitely hard. So the teachers will recognise that you're new. And they'll recognise that you need help. And that's okay. Because the teachers are friendly and they're willing to give you this help. And they know that you've just done a huge jump from primary school to high school. And my second part of Year 7, I suppose, was the first, the school camp. Which was in week 2, I believe. And in this, you attend a YMCA camp in Anglesey. And the purpose of this is to settle the students around their peers and their teachers. And for me, 
This was a great opportunity for me to learn other people who have interests like me, like my soccer, um, you know, public speaking. It all really interests me. It also introduces you to the leaders of our school, as this year, uh, the school leaders attended this camp and helped out with the U7s. It's a great opportunity to meet other friends and really come together in your new school and your environment. The camp gave me opportunities to immerse myself in with new people and make new friends. With a school of 1,500 and a year level of about 390, there are plenty of people for you to meet and get to know. And my third part of being at Year 7 is being all grown up. As I said before, in six to seven months, you'll all be in high school. You're no longer in primary school, you're no longer the little kids, you're now in high school. You've now got a future ahead of you. And you're now going to be teenagers and young adults. Being grown up isn't a bad thing though. This school recognises that you're grown up and gives you extra responsibilities. Uh, year 10s have passions. They're allowed to work on what they're interested in. And finally, it's about the future, year eight and onwards. Year seven is the year for you to learn new subjects and to get to know what you are interested in. It sets you up for future years and subject selection. And one of the most important years for the development of your interests and what you want to do in the future coming years. But the biggest thing about my year seven journey is to all of you is to enjoy it and make the very most of it. Thank you. Jack and Amy. Uh, we like to think that when people walk out of here, one of the things that they always think is that we're a really caring school. Um, as Amy talked about, it, is there is key themes at each year level that we emphasise through a whole range of strategies, etc. But we all also know that we all need some special individual attention from time to time, and that's why we have what we call the Student Support Centre. Ange Tremaine, who's standing over here beside the Roslyn sign, uh, runs the student support centre. So if there are special, your student uh, has special needs uh, of any description, you might like to catch Anne's later and talk to her about transition, we offer extra transition in, in those cases where need to be. But even during the, during the four years here, the student support centre is always available for families uh, to support when need, when they, uh, when need, when the need arrives. So I shouldn't look at the next slide first. Um, from here tonight is basically that uh, you will be, you choose your school and uh, if you are in our neighbourhood you are automatically have a position here. If you are rural you can choose this school. If you are outside that zone you can also apply. Um, you should put within with that application the reasons why you'd like to be at this school and if you are in that position you might like to catch me later uh, to have a chat as well. Um, as Jack talked about, transition always comes with some challenges, but the first thing is, boys and girls, is that you finish your primary school really well. I mean, grade six is a really special year. Uh, we do hope that you choose to join us next year, and we look forward, to, if you do choose to do that, we look forward to working with you over the next four years. As I said, I'll be around later. Um, I think we might have won the first race. <laughs> they tell me the ad's on loop here, do you know, listen? Okay, I hope it's not five minutes because you'll see this ten times. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I'll be around later Aww. as well. Thank you. Community leader for Year Seven and Eight this year. I'm not going to let. I'm not going to live this down with, with Ernie beating me. I actually thought he was going to be the one that takes the longest time, and then they're all waiting for me. So I'm not going to live that down. Anyway, that's okay. So and then I had to run here. I felt like I was on some kind of um, TV series. Okay, I don't usually follow notes, but I don't want to say the same thing over and over again. So sorry. As I said, I am Janie Ryan. We are, as you've already noticed, we've gone round and round and round. You've met my son, which is also interesting. We're going to talk about him in a minute and embarrass him. I'm sure that Ernie has actually touched on this um, in regards to our vision statement. 
<laughs> it is the every. I sat listening to Ernie um, a number of years ago. I've had three children who've come through this school. So, and it was before I started working here. I came afterwards. And I remember sitting here thinking, what am I going to do? This is my daughter, my eldest daughter. I didn't really know Bendigo that well. And I was a little bit worried about putting my daughter's education and my family's education into BSE's hands. And yet, now my son, who is in year 10, is the last one coming through, and I'm glad I did. So if you have any questions about that, as a parent, I'm more than happy to answer that as well. So, every. I actually believe it. When I've had three children come through here, I believe every. Every student. When I was here, um, when we were here a, a while ago, we actually put this together. And it's funny because we talk about it, that it's every, but really, we have a look right now, every kid is important to their family. So when I say every student, I actually mean every family. So every family is important here because if we don't have your support, when you know your child better than we do, then we're not going to be able to get the best, the every bit for your child. Now, now I know I have to go really, really fast, so I'm... <sighs> okay, oh, don't know what happened there. Does it matter? No, oh, there you go. Okay, so the transition from primary school to high school. One of my most important things is that we will watch you guys grow into young adults, and that is a privilege. I know, I know that we have the things where teenagers, you know, that kind of thing, everybody says that, everybody says, oh, teenagers. But to me, we have the opportunity to make a difference. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm too old to be starry-eyed, but that's what I actually believe, that we have, the, we have the opportunity here to do that. And I think that BSC actually gives you that opportunity. So we're transitioning, we're moving from child to young adult, and we're pushing them into independence. It doesn't seem that far away, does it? But we're pushing them to independence. Alrighty. So, let me talk about what we do in Year 7, because that's what I'm here for. This is, the, this is the, the area that Year 7s will come to. We have house learning coaches, which are supporters. They are in houses, so Rosie, Rosalind, Alexandra, Shamrock and Fortuna are Year 7s are put into their houses. They have one person that is their mentor, someone who will be their advocate, someone who will be there all the time for them. Of course, they always have their teachers as well. We also have, we make sure that the HLC, the House Learning Coach, communicates with family, with teachers, everybody that helps that child move forward. The majority of class time is spent here except for specialist subjects, it's in here. You'd be surprised when I went to, to school myself and when I taught at other schools is that in here, 90 kids, four teachers, it's nowhere near as noisy as one and 25. It's really strange. I think it's because it's the energy that, that moves along with it. So students have the majority of class time here, but we also have, and we're dedicated to a personalised program, as you can see there, the interest, the collaboration, the independence, it's pretty exciting. They look at project-based learning, languages, technology. We have specialist things like the Academy for Creative Arts and the Athletes Development Program. In Year 7, we have a base camp. We just said the jump from Year, seven, year 6 to Year 7 is huge. We know that. So we have a base camp where we let students know how this college runs. And already, looking around, when you've seen the Year 7s this year, they talk the talk. They already know what it means to be a member of BSE. And that's the supportive program. Okay. You're sitting in one of the learning spaces, as I said. Students, as that previous clip showed, are given the opportunity to work collaboratively, independently as well. We understand that not every student is at standard, so that could be above or below, and that's okay. What we do is provide programs such as workshops that will be in a pod, and this is way more than what would be in a pod, you guys sitting here. What we would do is we'd have a big question or a big concept, and then students would have workshops 
to develop their understanding of that concept or, or explicit teaching. <laughs> then they would come back in here and collaborate with other people at different levels. And that helps us all move on. Okay, so that's something that we, we really pride ourselves in, and I certainly do. We have a learning structure, which I think is pretty important. It's pretty important for me. We have lesson guidelines. So students will come in and there'll be a do now, where they have to sit and start work. Gone are the days when you'd have to wait for everybody and you'd be sort of still waiting and all those sorts of things. You'd actually have a do now where they sit and do it. We have learning intentions. If a student doesn't know what we're intending to do, then why bother? We met, must ensure that students know where they're going, teachers know where they're going, so we're all on the same page. We also have success criteria, so a student knows what they should do to move out of the classroom. So what happens is they will know that they are able to do something through the success criteria. We also have a leave pass, which I know is not up there. The leave pass is to, short, to ensure that students are, are learning are working, have something to show for their day in class. So they can go home and show you guys. Because that's really, really important that we're all working together, we're doing homework, all those sorts of things. Really it's home learning all together. So that's something that we really, really encourage at BSE. We have a lot of processes, systems and expectations. I'm sure you've heard of them. Jenny Brown will continue on with that. But we do. And we expect, we have high expectations. I spoke to the Year 7s yesterday, I do a Year 7 assembly on a Tuesday, a Year 8 assembly on a Wednesday, and we actually talk about being able to succeed. Everybody can. So we have those systems to ensure that we support students, we monitor their progress via the dashboard, and help them to embrace and own their learning. So we'll go, um, Jenny Brown will go through that in a minute. Okay, I have nobody winding me up, which is good. Oh, if you want to be able to just have a bit of a deep breath, you'll wind me up, won't you? Good. So we also have a one-to-one -one program. Now, I'm probably showing my age, but when I was in year 11, my school got a computer. I know, one computer, one computer. And we, had, we learned how to use a little turtle that sort of moved, we had to program it. Now every one of our students has a computer. It means, it's unbelievable, it means that they are connected around the world, they are connected to each other, they are able to design, create well beyond what I could do in my, in my, um, my time. Also my daughter, she's now 21 and she did not have the opportunity to have one-to-one -one. and I can see the differences just in the learning. So we must have parental support of course for the digital um, framework that we're, we're making sure that our school embraces. So what we need to do is make sure that um, there's also an annual financial commitment by parents, all those sorts of things, which we can talk about later if you need to, but it ensures that we are able to personalise a program beyond the classroom walls. Okay. We're back to the start. So I hope you've now seen what, I like to say that I'm the one that's down on the ground. I like to know, I'm sort of more hands-on. So I want you to understand that this actually means a lot to me because it is that notion of every. And I think that's something that BSE really, really does embrace. It is something that's very important because, and I suppose it's a little thing in my heart as well, because I want my, my kids to be seen as, as every too. So I understand that, that you guys do as well. Okay, our timelines. After this presentation, after this presentation, after Jenny Brown's presentation, when you go for a self-guided tour, I want, um, if you are not in a Bendigo school, or if you're a, a non-government school in Bendigo, then you need to come and see me to have a, um, a package sent out to you. Everybody else, Gets, gets one through their feeder school anyway. We've got some dates here, and the most important one, for me, maybe not for you guys, but for me is Orientation Day. It is such a lovely time, Orientation Day. Our current Year 7 cohort, it was just fantastic to get to know them and see them, and now see them grow. And that, and I haven't even been 
Is it how we're going with time? Good. Yep, excellent. Alrighty, so what I want you to do is after we put the we've got the commercial on as well, is understand, take away that year seven we support. We understand it's a big jump, but we support you and your child in moving forward into young adulthood, which is a little bit scary, but young adulthood. Our next um, speaker will be Jenny Brown, who'll be talking about curriculum. Thank you very much. Turn on that Sorry. Um, welcome everyone. My name's Jenny Brown and I'm the curriculum facilitator and timetable here at Bendigo South East. Brent and Haywood will assist me tonight because my technology skills are adequate and he will rescue me if I have a disaster. Um, wonderful to see so many of you here thinking about a very big step for where your children will uh, consider going in year seven. So I will talk about what's happened this year, mindful that we are always here trying to improve things. So I'll give you a snapshot of what we've done this year and that we will possibly be looking different next year, but whatever we do, it will be good. I promise you that. We're very proud of what we do. Okay, so said this, this will be the third time I'm saying this. If you come here in year seven, you'll be in four houses. Shamrock is the best. Then there's <laughs> Alexandra, Fortuna and Rosalind. <laughs> you, those houses you will stay with for four years and they should form a really important part of your time here. Okay, so um, you might have brothers and sisters in different houses. We're not able to actually promise that um, children sort of a, with their siblings or whatever, but the houses are a really valuable part of our, of our schooling. Currently, you do maths, English, science, and humanities <coughs> in your houses. As I've said, next year, we're looking at different ways to do things, but your houses will still be that base group that you start every day with. We then do arts, health and PE, languages and technologies as mixed groups depending on some of the things that you might choose to do. Uh, we will give you a really good taste of everything that is required in curriculum. Most of you are perhaps still doing Osbells. By the start of next year, all, I was going to say government schools, but I believe it's all schools are to be following the Victorian curriculum F10. Um, so, we start. We work moved to that this year, and we are getting better at it. And all schools have to be moved to it by next year. But as I've said, we are always looking for ways to personalise curriculum for students. Really important. People as old as me. When I went through school, we sort of had to learn knowledge, etc. Whereas today, we know that knowledge is readily available on the internet, etc. But some of the skills that are going to be essential to being successful in life, leadership, critical thinking, collaboration, being able to adapt, innovate, to be aware of the world, communicate, being curious, which is why we try to personalise. We try to not give you just things that you love doing, but we try to make that breadth that I've spoken about as interesting and as rewarding as possible. People, I think that there are figures that are often shouted at us that students like grade six, you might have five or ten different careers in your life, whereas I've only ever had one. And you need to be able to adapt as you go to them as careers disappear, new careers are found. So it's really important that we uh, prepare you to be able to do that. Some of that is that we focus very much on five R's here. We think, obviously, the ability to do maths and the ability to write are incredibly important, but some of those, sometimes they're called soft skills, but the skills that will ensure that you do really well in the workplace or in your life. So. We expect you to be ready, and by that I don't mean here at 
7 o'clock in the morning, but we expect you to be ready to give anything a go. We expect you to be ready to try something, even if it's making you feel a little bit uncomfortable or whatever. You need to be willing to try things. Then you have to be resilient. When it doesn't work, you need to be able to bounce back. We don't want you to give up. If maths is a bit hard, we want you to keep trying. You have to, you have to be able to bounce back. Reciprocity, that's where we're really proud here that we treat our students incredibly well and in return, we expect that when you're here in year 10, you will be leaders, you will be showing the school the right way to do things. So it's about giving and taking. Resourcefulness, we expect you to be problem solvers. We expect you to be able to think outside the square and to, to work really well. And then to be able to reflect on, oh, it didn't go so well today, tomorrow I'll try this and it might be better. Uh, so we do core subjects, maths, English, science or humanity and humanities. We also do those other areas that I said. So in arts, dance, drama, media, music, visual arts. One of your first decisions. We have a wonderful music program here. 70 of our year seven students are in it and they are learning instruments, they are in bands, they are performing. Now if you would like, if you decide to come to this school and you think that is your cup of tea, there is a come and try night. You would come to that and you would be able to fiddle with different instruments and see what you think you might like to learn. Okay? Wonderful opportunity. So arts is exciting. Uh, health and PE is exciting, like we really need to be fit and healthy for the rest of our lives, so it's very important that kids put into that. Languages. This year we have done tasters. Semester one, Chinese, Indonesian and German, and the last week of this term students will select which language they will continue in semester two. For lots of kids, that's been really enjoyable to try the different languages and, and think, oh yes, I think I'll do this one or whatever. We're also aware though that some of you have been doing languages for a number of years at uh, primary schools. So next year, we're working on a way to offer an immersion program for Chinese and German. This would mean you would do the language in one other subject. So we're just trying to work out how that will fit in the timetable, but for students who um, you know, have a history of Chinese or a history of German, we might be able to help you become stronger in that area, develop your skills. So that's something to think about. Mrs Elliott and Mrs Steen, the language teachers, are here tonight if you did want to speak to anyone about that. If we do get that up and running, we'll certainly advertise that well at the end, of, before the end of the year, so you can express your interest for that. Uh, technologies, wonderful area as well. We will give tasters in foods, metals, textiles, plastics, electronics, robotics in year seven, so that in year eight, you could choose the ones that you would like to continue with. Now, as I've said, that's what we've done this year. Things may be a little bit different next year, but you will certainly get the breadth of curriculum that you are expected to have. We also have, so you could be thinking about music already, and you could be thinking about the languages, immersion. You can also think about, would you like to apply for our athlete development program? When you do your self-tour afterwards in the centre of the school, our ADP program, which is very popular, very successful, you can go up there and see what you think about that. If you were in the ADP program, you don't do health, like it becomes your health and physical education. If you would like to, you could think about the Academy of Creative Arts, another wonderful program we've started this year that will be down in the theatre. Uh, there will be people there to explain that thing to you, that explain the good things they do there. Information evenings will take place for both of these programs. I don't know the dates yet. These are by application. You can't just select to go into them. You need to apply and you would have an interview and a whole range of things. But uh, the feedback this year has been really positive on both of those programs. ADP is in its third year. ACA, this is its second year. So they're things, good things to be thinking about. So music. Languages, ADP, ACA. 
Each student has their own timetable. When I went through school, 1B or whatever I was, everybody did the same thing. Whereas here, very lot like, students don't have the same timetable because everybody, depending on all those choices they had, their timetables will look different. You will always be in that house and you will start every day in that house and then you will have your own individual timetable. We'll give you a paper copy of that the first day that you're here, but then once you're in the swing of it, you will look at that online. All students here, as you've probably heard already, are expected to have a computer, which is a really, we're really proud of the programs that we have on our computer, which we'll show you in a minute, but the computer is an essential part of your learning. Um, okay, yep. So the way we do things around here, really important, home school partnership, probably our biggest priority. We want to share the journey with you. There are no surprises and we have really high expectations. And I'm going to show you how we do that. We have our online program called BSC Virtual, where on day one, when you collect your laptop or you get your super password that gets you into it, it will actually have a list of all the work you're going to be doing this semester. It, it has due dates, the things that you will be expected to do. That's really good. If you happen to have a naughty day, your parents will know before you get home. <laughs> okay, so our system is, if, <laughs> well, yeah, some kids, whatever, anyway. <laughs> No surprises, as I said, and very high expectations. Should you have perfect weeks, which we hope, and, and hundreds of kids do, you get points for that house that you're in. <coughs> Shamrock's leading at present because we've got lots of kids having perfect weeks. So, really important, like everything interconnects. So, we're going to try and show you that now. We haven't, hopefully we've perfected it this time. It's taken us a little bit longer than we anticipated. <clears throat> uh, Brenton's getting up one of our Year 10 students whose dashboard is magnificent, but everybody can have dashboards like this. Okay, so our dashboard, first square is your English marks, literacy marks. Second square, your maths marks. Middle square is your Victorian curriculum, your F10, which we've moved to. You might still be calling it Ozabelle's at your previous school, primary school. Your attendance, assessment or work submission. Here, work is not given to me. All work here goes through the LA office. It's scanned. And at home, you can see that work has been handed in. Okay, so it's this sort of homeschool partnership that we have. The bottom five are important, but they are filled in at the end of the semester. So the top five, they change every night. Okay, like we had, it aggregates at quarter to eight every night and things that change on it. So that's a really important thing. Down the side, timetables. So M today started in with her house learning. Everyone starts with their house. M then had VCE maths. <coughs> Middle block Wednesday we had house activities and then she finished the day with German. Down here are the list of work that she still has due. When work has been submitted, it disappears up to the top, but this tells, so M has got the dates that she's got work due and so I could scroll down. Yes, thanks. And so that's got what she's got until the end of this semester. At the start of next semester, that will be much longer because it will have the whole semester's work and as it's handed in, they disappear. The results contribute to that dashboard. Yes, makes sense? Yeah, okay, very good. Um, we, have, we have some really good systems. We think we have a up the top notices. Um, and again, we don't want to read all M's personal messages, but we have a messaging system here. Parents, you can message us. And uh, not too, like, <laughs> Mr. Hayward, I'm not too sure what happened today, whatever, whatever, or Mrs. Brown, can we have a change of class, of teacher, or whatever? I, probably, I get hundreds of messages a week from kids and parents, and I really enjoy those. And 
we don't get a lot of messages like that. <laughs> but um, this is a great way to keep informed. You will get an email every week from your house learning coach because that homeschool partnership is so important to us. We certainly don't want you to ever think that you only ever hear from us the bad news. We really try to celebrate all the good things that happen. And, by the sound of it, just I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'll be hanging around if you do have any questions. It's a very exciting time to be thinking about where your children will go for four years. And... Uh, we're really grateful that you've come to have a look at us. You are now able to have a self-directed tour. Is that right, Mrs Fitz? That's it. And have we finished now? <laughs> so thank you very much. It's been very, very good in listening. And please go and enjoy. And